Kites Time to Fly. This is a real-time cooperative game that I saw being demoed at Gen Con 2022. It seemed really good, so I picked up a copy at the booth of Floodgate Games, and since I played it with my kids, and I also played it with adult friends. So, you know, I, my experiences with, with, a range, with a range of different uh, people. The game uses these sand timers that represent kites and basically each player will have a hand of cards and uh, the purpose of the game is to go through the entire deck to play every card cooperatively, you know, going around the table and taking turns playing cards, keeping the kites in the sky. So when a, a sand timer still has any amount of sand on top, is not completely exhausted, then you represent a kite in the sky. So each player will have a hand of cards, and when the first player uh, to start the game, you start the white timer. Then when it's your turn, you simply play a card. If it's at the beginning of the game and the timer is still resting on the side, then you simply uh, stand all the timers indicated on your card, and there will be one or two on each card. And the timers do not all work the same, they are not all equally, um, they don't take the same amount of time and I'll leave it to you to figure out that, which ones are the fastest because that is part of the fun. So suppose the next player plays that card and that's what the player does. Then the following player does that red and orange so they stand the orange, the red up and they turn the orange. And then the next player has red and yellow. Uh, red was just stood up so probably is not the best time to turn that one. And let's solve the next player can do something about it. Then we got blue and purple like that. And then we got uh, uh, orange and purple and so on and so forth. So that's the idea. You want to keep them going and right now we just lost the game because red uh, was empty. But that's the general idea. Also any card with only one symbol, with only one symbol can be used to turn the white instead. The, so the white can be turned by any of those. Another thing is that uh, the idea is that you have, your, you have your hand of cards, you play a card, you draw a card from the draw pile, and the, when the draw pile is exhausted, the people still have a hand of cards to play, that starts the grand finale, that means that from that moment on, the white timer cannot be uh, flipped anymore. You gotta finish all of your cards so while keeping every every sand timer in play without turning that one. So again, as you become experienced, you try to take that into account also. When you become really experienced, then you want to start adding uh, challenge cards uh, that when played will give you specific uh, challenges, such as this one. The airplane is making a lot of noise and so people cannot communicate when a card is played until the game goes back to the play that played it. The storm is a super tricky one because it forces every timer to be flipped. And then the cross lines, players will have to give cards to each other, which of course can make things quite messy. And you choose how many of these and which kinds you wanna have and you're gonna shuffle them in the main deck and so you're gonna have to deal with that. So this is how you play kites, it's super simple. You go through all the cards, you win the game, cooperatively as a group, otherwise you lose the game. Super simple and it's a very pleasant filler and I'll say it's a filler in the purest sense of the word, which means it plays in a couple of minutes, maybe in like in two minutes uh, if a pl the players mess up early on, which is probably what's going to happen the first time you play the game. And players will want to play more and they'll get better, uh, but the game in my experience, even playing with different groups, does not become addictive. It's not one of those fillers that then you study as a filler and becomes the main course of the night. Both groups of throw away would like, yeah, this was fun, now what are we going to play next? And maybe it's a testament to how spoiled we've been by the current renaissance of gaming that fillers are so good that we even wonder if a filler can, you know, become the main uh, feature of a night of a game night or a game event and so I have to clarify when a filler is a filler. This is a filler in the purest sense. Played a couple of rounds for five, ten minutes in between games while you're waiting for friends to uh, come to your game night. It's great. It really works that way. It's uh, 
It's immense simplicity that you can teach it in about a minute or two and play for about a minute or two and then put it away. Setup time is also almost nothing. You just need to shuffle the cards. It has all the hallmarks, hallmarks of a great filler. It's entertaining while it lasts. It does what it needs to do while it lasts. So I find it very pleasant. Uh, but again, after a couple of rounds, uh, uh, at least the groups I played it with, they wanted to move on, which again, for a filler, filling time in between other things is perfectly fine. I happened to play during, during a lunch break uh, and we only had, you know, like 10, 15 minutes. And guess what? Guess what? It was fun uh, for that time. So kites may not have a lasting power, but as a filler, as a true filler, it is definitely a good one.